Welcome to my place in upstate New York. I'm going to create a piece today that's inspired by a few artists. One of them would be Peter Brown, who experiments quite a bit with resin and wood and other materials, coffee beans and a few other different things. Um, and there's a Korean artist named Lee J. Hyo, H Y O, I believe. Korean artist who creates things with natural pieces of tree lumber. And so here, this is my little homage to him. He makes incredibly huge pieces that are just absolutely beautiful. What he does with a log, he sands it, shapes it, turns it into all kinds of incredibly beautiful large objects. And what I'm doing here on a small scale is I'm collecting the branches from my backyard. And like I said, in the spirit of Peter Brown, I'm going to encase them in resin. And then I'm going to spin them on the lathe. And just a few safety tips, if anybody ever cuts natural wood on a bandsaw or on a chop saw, it is extremely dangerous. It seems fairly simple, you're just sticking some wood in there, but because it's not flat against the table, it'll take all kinds of unpredictable pull-ins and twists and turns. So it's really important that if you ever did decide to cut natural wood on a chop saw or on a bandsaw, that you're extremely careful and make sure that your wood is held tightly against the table because like I said you just can't predict where it's going to go and knowing that I was going to basically make a cake I wanted to collect thick branches and skinny branches and that's what I'm doing here I probably grabbed maybe six or eight of these small trees out of my backyard there and I went back out after you saw that initial grab I went back out one more time because I did not have enough This took up an incredible amount of, of wood just for the small cake that I was making. And here you see me using a hatchet just clearing each of the largest pieces. And then I went back and picked up some of those smaller twigs up off the ground. And it occurred to me, since I'm going to use an epoxy resin, I wanted to be able to pop out of a mold. And polypropylene is perfect for that. And here you see me collecting the sticks and just making sure I have the volume that I need to fill that mold. And that's what I'm doing here is I'm just putting more and more sticks in there. And these sticks are obviously wet. I just cut them off of the their stumps just now. So they're all damp and wet. And I did what I think is a, a little fix for them. You'll see I take them into the house. And there I got my collection there. I got a nice collection of thick and thin. And now Taylor and I are taking these and we're breaking them up, putting them into strainers and pots. And I put them into my Aga stove. We have an Aga stove in the house which stays on all the time. It takes about a gallon of propane a day to keep it warm. And I kept them in the oven, in the warming oven, which is only about 150 degrees, probably for about eight hours. So I dried them off pretty good. You can see in some of the ends there they're split, but obviously none of those right there in the front. But some of the, the logs split from the drying. And now what I'm using here is West's epoxy, West Systems epoxy. It's typically used for boat building, but West Systems epoxy is great for a lot of things. And the sticks kept floating, so I kept having to push them down. Ultimately, I just put a piece of wood over them, and now it's the next day. And just as I predicted, it popped right out of that polypropylene mold. And there I have my fruitcake. This is an exciting moment. And I tag it with the ice pick. And now I'm back upstate. I'm putting this on the lathe, and I have this new lathe by ShopFox. It was something I actually purchased, and I was anxious to try it. And there I am playing around with the, the speeds, and right away I realized that this stuff does not cut very well. You'll see when I stop it how chipped out it gets. But I knew my initial cut was going to go halfway through those external pieces there, so I had a long way to go to get to where I wanted to. But it was not cutting very cleanly. So I was taking much smaller bites. I was having a hard time getting it to be perfectly round. I am not a lathe expert. I don't do it certainly enough to have a very set attack. I'm always just experimenting, trying different angles, different techniques. You can see me there just changing the chisel perch. I'm never quite sure which is the right place to be. 
but so my attack is basically just remove material and now here I had a little issue and you'll see it coming up right here I am cutting that end grain and I'm taking a very slow approach and then watch cut blowy everything goes wrong right here right there the chisel grabbed one of those end grains and broke the chisel perch you see there my chisel perch broke right in half I have that big cantilevered edge which I was a little suspicious of when I first got it because I was worried that something like that could happen and I didn't really feel that same sturdiness that you would feel if the chisel perch was supported directly underneath it and then of course the plate bent so a double whammy so there you see my my attaching plate bent so here I bring it over to my south bend lathe and I while it's spinning slowly I whack it a few times and I get the bend out most of the way and here I just give it a quick surface I just face it off two times to get it nearly flat but not perfect it's not perfect and because that's a cast plate and I already just cut off a substantial amount of it I wasn't going to cut anymore so I live with the little wobble I got out about 80 percent of the wobble so I realized chisels is probably not the way to go I'm using the four and a half inch grinder with a 36 grit pad on it and it makes pretty quick work of that end grain and uh, now I had to get my my perfect circle back I lost it and you could see the wobble there at the part that I did not cut yet and I'm just working it really slowly because I got to where I thought I wanted to stay and now I, I have to kind of make that circle again and so now I go back at it with the grinder I'm working on the surface on the side I'm working at the end grain and I just kept going deeper and deeper and working it with the sander I, I I'm making a bowl but I'm not making a full proper bowl I'm taking full advantage of that look you see that side there where I split the logs basically in half I say logs but I'm using the branches as logs in this case on a small scale and as far as the the grinder I was using the DeWalt battery operated one which I killed the battery immediately so then I went to the electric one and I knew this was going to take some time so I put on my heads headphones and start listening to a podcast which usually keeps me going when I do something that's really long and involved like this and while I was playing with the feeds and speeds I threw one of these pieces out I sped it up to try and work that end grain a little bit and that piece threw out thankfully it did not hit me and it landed in a pretty easy spot to find in my garage which is pretty full up with junk I was able to find it right away and now you see me working this is the next morning I have a fan sitting, you can't see the fan, but I have a, an industrial fan sitting just behind the lay of the air. It's sitting on top of the garbage pail. That's why I'm working off to the side. And that industrial fan is blowing the sawdust out into the open air. This, this sawdust obviously is a bit crazy. It's a mix of West Systems epoxy and wood. And so I just set that fan up to just blow it directly out of the shop. And so now I am cutting the back off. I was going to initially flip it around once I got the face off nice and clean and do the back but because that plate is bent I did not want to take it off and try and put it back on because it would have just thrown everything off again. I put that tape on there just for insurance because I was at, running a little bit high speed and so you see I just cut back as much as I can and then under that plate my initial plan was to grind that off but you'll notice that I leave it toward the end of the video and you'll see why I leave it and so here I am, I am pretty much arrived at the shape I want, and so now I'm just palm sanding it. It's funny, when you try and sand something on the lathe, there's no speed or feed or anything you could do to get rid of the circular streak. So you just have to just hunker down and sand it while it's not spinning. And that's been my experience. Definitely sand with the grain, in this case, this side grain. If it was spinning, you'd see all the streaks and spins in there no matter what you did and now there's the end grain inside of the bowl I gave it a couple of coats of poly but because it was a bit cold out it didn't dry quite to the hardness that it needs to get a good sanding in so I ended up adding a couple of coats and there you see I'm just grinding that bottom so that it doesn't have a wobble in it and I let it so it lands on three small points and I left the bottom on so that the bowl looks like it's floating I will eventually go back in and just cover the whole bottom with a piece of leather 
and now here we are we're basically at a finish and I want to sand it and coat it a couple of more times but right now it's just too cold out to get that sandable surface on there you can see some of the, sh the brush marks in there so I'm just gonna let it bake for a while and then I'm gonna sand it with probably like a 220 or a 320 and work my way up to like a 600 and then I'll give it one last hand rubbed coat thank you for watching